Hello, Barn Burners, Barneys and Bettys. Good to have you with us on Red Barn Radio. I'm Brad Becker. This is season number 19 of Red Barn Radio, and tonight we welcome you to show number what? 744, John. <laughs> our staff and our artists uh, so appreciate that you continue to visit the Red Barn Radio YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch channels to enjoy our Wednesday live streams like this one tonight. This week we bring to Red Barn Woody Woodworth and the Piners. Hailing from Richmond, Virginia, Woody Woodworth and the Piners are part of the newest revival of Virginia music. Influenced by Virginia's deep musical history and the Appalachian culture, Woody Woodworth and the Piners fuse storytelling with country, bluegrass, and rock and roll to create a sound that can be described as Appalachian alt country with a steady shot of southern rock and roll. How's that? Welcome Woody Woodworth and the Piners to the Red Barn stage.
Good evening, and welcome to Red Barn Radio. Wherever in the world you're listening, welcome to Roots Music Southern Style. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. Red Barn Radio is supported by Visit Lex, Lexington, Kentucky's Convention and Visitors Bureau. More information on what Lexington has to offer is at visitlex.com. LexArts, Lexington, Kentucky's premier cultural development, advocacy, and fundraising organization, working for the development of a strong and vibrant arts community as a means of enhancing the quality of life in Central Kentucky. Follow Red Barn Radio on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Here's the host of Red Barn Radio to tell us more about tonight's performers. As a young person, Woody Woodworth, a Virginia native, was born and raised in a working class family where music was an integral part of daily life. At an early age, he was introduced to the sounds of Dolly Parton, George Jones, Merle Haggard, Waylon Jennings, and so forth through his beloved grandparents' obsession with the Grand Ole Opry and country music. Woody and the Piners will deliver you some classic South here tonight, honky-tonk twang, lonesome harmonica, fiddle, and a punchy rhythm that's going to draw you in and leave you longing for a time not forgotten. Get ready for a great show, folks. we got Woody Woodworth and the Piners on the Red Barn stage. Thank my love, you stars. Hey. 
Thank you so much. Well, I'm Woody Woodworth, and uh, these are the Pioneers, and uh, we're just really grateful to be here at Red Barn Radio tonight. Thank you for having us. Our next song is a, a song about not making the same mistakes your family made, and where I come from, we've made a few, and uh, this song is called Family Tree. A little bit honky-tonk. Well, my roots run deep down the old family tree. Trouble runs deep in my blood. And every time that I climb to the top, I hit every branch on the way down. When I was a boy, my mama told me, son, don't do like your daddy done. Stay away from wild women, whiskey and bars. Don't let that lonely bottle break your heart. When my roots run deep down the old family tree, trouble runs deep in my blood. I hit every branch on the way down. Come on. Well, my roots. I hit every branch on the way down. so much so I grew up in rural Hanover County Virginia and uh, 
in that town, you know, there's a lot that you see, a lot that you go through. There's loss of love and people falling in love. And this next song is a country song I wrote called Red Wine and Roses. And it's about, uh, about trying to find your way through some, some heartache and trying to find the good and the bad. Um, this song is called Red Wine and Roses. Thank you all. In the back seat of a borrowed car, remember the way you fell and the song you played. Stain on a white dresser was all that he took, and red tail lights on a cold window pane. She was gone. She swore never her like red wine and rose, and an old. In a small town where the people talk and they're more church steeples than you can count and you find yourself in the wrong side of town in a cheap boat and the whiskey pill they don't do your Stumble on the memory of red wine and rose and an old country song.
Thank you all. Thank you all so much. Give it up for Piners here. Well, we uh, we went to Bristol a couple years ago and recorded um, a record uh, called Virginia, and there was a uh, there was a lot of writing I was trying to catch up with because I kind of started late. And uh, anyway, there were some songs I put together, and I really wanted to get them out there. And we went to downtown Bristol uh, and recorded there for a couple days. And some of these songs are what came out of that. And this next song is called "Did You Love Me the Same," and uh, it's one of those songs on that album, so we're going to play this one for you. Hey, if you're just joining us, you're listening to Woody Woodworth and the Piners. Um, what are you pining for tonight out there in Radioland? We are pining for some more good music from these guys. It's uh, such great sounding stuff. Loving it. Um, hey, we always like to uh, begin our program uh, with uh, a little game of some kind. Um, or, or, I mean, I, I should say, I've always thought it would be fun if we would begin our program with a game of some kind. 
Um, so yeah, <laughs> so I wonder if, um, yeah, those of you listening, um, you, you've heard that these guys are from uh, Virginia. Uh, Woody has talked about that a little bit. Um, now you can pull out your, uh, consult your state motto reference app and look to the person next to you and tell them who Virginia is for. Yeah, just one more minute. Sorry, time's up. Woody, answer that question. It's for lovers. Lovers. Or music lovers, too. I think and music that lovers, story. that's right. And Kentucky's for music lovers. Uh, great to have you guys here. And um, that was a fun game, I, I opener. That's the first time we've ever done that. So we'll, we'll fix that up a little bit. Um, I wonder if uh, Woody, <laughs> I wonder, uh, I wonder, Woody, if you might start by, you know, going back to the time uh, before you actually started playing music, uh, and maybe that's really early in your life, uh, and tell us, um, you know, when you look back, uh, where do you think it came from? Well, I, I grew up in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a family that was really close-knit, and uh, very, very early on, um, my, my papa and my nanny, and I'm sure you, got, you guys have papas or I think Papaws here, or, or, or Pappies. And well, uh, I came from yeah, I came from a different part of the country, so right. I we call them uh, Grandma and Grandpa. Grandma and Grandpa. So yeah. I had a Papa <laughs> and I had a nanny, and uh, early on, they, they just their house was always filled with with music and mostly country music, and and um, I just remember being a little kid and staying with my 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 nanny and my Papa and sitting on the, the on a Saturday night on on the floor and watching the Opry. That was like the one thing they did. My grandfather, he was either watching the Atlanta Braves uh. on TBS, the, the news, or he was watching um, TNN, uh, the, the Nashville Network. So was it the so was it the, uh, the actually the country music um, that you felt like really sounded good in your ears, or was it watching um, watching your your grandparents enjoy it? Was there something happening on the stage that was exciting to you? It was it was a lot it was a, it was a lot of all of that. But my 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 papa and my nanny in particular they they just they they were just so passionate about country music and um, you know they they were just so in love with it. They they shared that love you know with me and and taught me you know they, they had a, they had a really um, strong love for like storytelling and they were always telling the, the greatest stories and that that's. One thing that I connected between them and the country music that they listened to were all the stories that, that they told. And, um, and, and a lot of that influences me today. I, I feel like a lot of the stories that I try to tell are stories that I either heard them talk about or things I experienced with, with them. Um, but very, very early on, we were, I was sitting around listening to, to the Grand Ole Opry, watching Dolly Parton you know, on, on the Opry. But they always had music playing in the house, um, and that was a big, big part of just feeling that, that sense of joy that we had in, in the household. And, uh, and they were really, really just, um, you know, so passionate about it that they would, you know, it was everywhere. The, my papa had a carport, and there would be music, a radio always playing out underneath the carport. And uh, Anyway, he, he, he passed away, uh, it's not anyway, he passed away a couple years ago, and, and I, I do a lot because of the influence he had on, on me as a child, so I think that was the first place um, that I started really paying attention to what music was doing and the stories it was telling, and then as I got older, I just fell in love with the guitar and wanting to learn how to play it, and uh, eventually my parents bought me a guitar. And At what point in time? In your I was life? about 13 years old when, right. when I got my first guitar, and it was a... Uh, just a cheaper guitar, and, and then the next year they got me a little bit better guitar as they saw me, you know, improving a little bit. And I'm still not a good guitar player, a great guitar player, but I, I, I found something in writing songs early on, and I was always doodling on pads of paper and writing stuff down. Mm. And, uh, and and I know I can draw that back to, to, my, to my family, and, and that's where a lot of it comes from. My mom was a huge music lover. That'd be the other place I get influenced from is... She she loved uh, you know the, the 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 songs of the '60s and '70s and the Allman Brothers and Marshall Tucker Band and uh, uh -huh. Charlie Daniels and Leonard Skinner and all those those uh, great you know uh, Southern rock bands and so that was always playing too so we just always had had music in the household and were these your mom's parents that you were talking about these are my mother's okay. parents okay oh, yeah, gotcha yeah. so how did so what were your were your grandparents equally 
uh, dispassionate about rock and roll, and how did they like their daughter? Uh, I, I don't know. They always direction. played country music, so I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what their flavor was. But riding around with my grandfather, he always yeah. had the radio on. It was always, you know, he was listening to Hank Williams, or he was listening to, uh, you know, Merle Haggard or Charlie Pride. And so I just, I, early on, I just fell in love with the, the, that genre of music. And so I try to blend a little bit of what my grandparents taught me uh, with with what my mom loved and um, I think we kind of found that sound here. So you had a lot of support then from your family choosing to do what you do um, and is this uh, is this what you do all the time or do you do other things too? No we I, I have a full-time job yeah uh, but uh, you know music became something for me that I, I didn't realize I needed it as much as I did in my life and I went through a, a period of uh, um, depression and anxiety uh, later on in my life in, in my in my 20s and, and early 30s and I, I went out there and got help for it and um, I think mental health is a really important thing and um, through that counseling and that time looking inward I, I really found that that music was that thing that kind of healed me and, and someone gave me great advice and told me to go pick up and start writing and uh, this was probably about in 2013 and I started playing open mic nights soon after and then it led to a band. All right. So music has been something that's always been healing for me. And uh, I, I, I've, I've found a sense of purpose in it. And I spend a lot of time working on writing. Uh, but there's other, other things in life. And, and you know, I, I wish I could do this full time. That would be the hope. Well, um, I, can I assume that's something you, you pine for? Absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. Ah, very nice. So, um, so during that time, if you don't mind me going back to that, during that time when... You, you know, you were just feeling emotionally, you know, like low um, or just vacillating wherever your wherever your head was at that time. Do you think that that was about, um, you know, getting to a, a point in your life and wondering if y you sort of had the courage to follow your dreams or, you know, do you, what, what did what did you find out yeah, in the yeah, course absolutely. of sort of I studying mean, I was that? Always, I was always that's a good question. I was always somewhat terrified to, to put myself out there. And, and mostly play my music and um and and i think that you know that that time i took to really look inward and and, and get the help that I, I needed at the time um it, it it was something that was a big turning point for me and and i wish i hadn't have been you know so um afraid of of what might happen you know in in not trying music or or pursuing my own thing yeah. and so there, there was a lot of fear based in that and getting up on stage and playing in front of people and playing my songs and just being vulnerable and um but that was also a major turning point for me and, and it's kind of why this band started and kind of why we named it the, the you know woody woodworth and the piners huh. um because we all pine for for something and uh and in mine just ended up being you know that, that chase for finding a purpose and writing songs and connecting with people in particular i feel like that's something that I, I long for is just that that human connection in yeah. my music and sharing what I've been through um, to maybe help help other folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. Um, I, would you mind telling the story ab about how you happened to um, s sort of stumble into our program, this program, this stage, learn about this stage where you're standing now? Yeah, absolutely. So Red Barn Radio was something uh, for me that I you know I found on on YouTube, um, just really trying to you know search for for what other songwriters w were doing and uh and and i came across red barn radio right at that time when i was i was struggling and, and really didn't know where this music thing was was going and um i saw i saw the the, the i saw a, a lens into um a lot of a lot of really good music that that's out there and um a lot of local or regional acts that are that are out there and and kind of struggling the way I was and, and wanting to do music full time. And I saw Red Barn as a place where that was a, a, a community. Uh, and, I, and I felt that right away, just watching the videos. And I would watch video after video after video. And then, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, found Tyler Childers and, um, you know, saw, saw you know, wh what happened uh, with him. And, and uh, I just really appreciated what Red Barn, you know, did uh, and does for artists. Huh. Wow, it's really great to have you here, Woody, and great to have all of you guys here loving the music and can't wait to hear more. Let's welcome back Woody Woodworth and the Piners to Red Barn Radio. Thank you. Uh, this next song is called uh, Cherokee Maggie. It's a, it's a, it's a
written in the tradition of a murder ballad, and when I was first starting to write, um, I was playing a little bit of bluegrass music, and uh, this is one of the songs that I was, I was working on, and finally years later finished it. The song's called Cherokee Maggie. Maggie was an Irish rose, one half a Cherokee. She came down from the Blackfoot Hills with a banjo on her knee. Her face was rough like leather, her hands were weathered too. A whiskey jug in one hand and a bag of tobacco too. Maggie with your hair like fire, Maggie with your eyes so green. She came down from the Blackfoot Hills, sail bootleg whiskey. She was meaner than a rattlesnake, as tough as mountain leather. Any man that crossed her wrong to kill him sure as hell. Yeah, hey, Maggie like a queen of diamonds. Maggie like an ace of spades. Maggie with your wild eyes shining brighter than a summer's day. Yeah, hey, Maggie with your hair like fire. Maggie with your eyes so green. But you came down from the Blackfoot Hills to sail bootleg with. Was dressed in English rag, the road of Cherokee red. She brewed Irish or whiskey from a rundown mountain shed. Well, wild eyed Maggie found a lover lying in another's bed. She killed him in a fit of rage. Thank you, thank you so much. So the next tune we have up for you is a, a, a song on, on that first album that we, we put out there, and it's called Pretty Girl from Carolina, and it's a, it's a song I wrote er, early on uh, when I was getting into songwriting, and I was probably about 20, 22 years old when I started this song, and uh, several years later, we, we finally recorded it and um, put it on that, that first record I put out, and uh, it's called Pretty Girl from Carolina. Thanks again for listening and tuning in, y'all.
sun stopped shining in Virginia that day. She got in the car and drove away. Here it is, southbound on the old 29. On that day, she drove away. Life's like love, it's something we just made. Don't let it slip away. Pretty girl. So the next song is a new song. Um, we took some time over the last uh, couple of years and, and started in 2019. And, uh, and, and, and right when that happened, we put out a couple uh, of singles. And one of, those, one of those songs we put out was this song called Long Way Down. And uh, it really kind of tells the story of what I struggled with, with anxiety and, and depression. And I, and I, wanted, to, I wanted to share that with folks um because i wanted to i wanted to show show that 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 there is light at the end of the tunnel and and, and many of us have been going through a hard time this last year and um really got stuck in a place that's just kind of weird and and odd and and uh anyway if you're out there and you're struggling with something i hope this song can uh, reach out and touch you a little bit and make you feel a little bit better and see that there is light at the on the other side Sometimes it's always darkest, you know, right before the, the dawn. This song's called uh, Long Way Down. Mm-hmm. 
Tattoo you got when you were 18. You're drowning on dry land, you can hardly. Vices like riptides pull you out to the sea. You carry your burdens, your shame and regret. It's a rope you wear around your neck. You're a You're a long way down. Your mama prays for you every day. There are things you've done that Jesus won't say. And every road you choose takes you farther away. And there are things you've done that Jesus won't say. You're a All right, before we get back to pining with the band, with Woody and his band, uh, I got something to tell you. Uh, next week on Red Barn Radio live stream, we got Reverend Freak Child. Yeah. Also known as the Reverend Billy Sunday, Reverend Love Child, Fordomatic. Our guest this coming week primarily performs solo acoustic, as he will for you, but he's also done collaborative work with some amazing musicians any deadheads out there will recognize, such as Melvin Seals or Mark Karen. Add to that Chris Parker, who beat the drums for the 
famous Paul Butterfield blues band, and also Grammy-nominated G. Love of Special Sauce and of my very favorite rock t-shirt that my daughter stole from me. Uh, the Reverend grew up in Hawaii and holds a degree in philosophy and religion from Northeastern University in Boston and now currently resides in Colorado, so he's coming a long way to play for you. He continues to perform and preach, proclaiming, music is my religion. Through song, I seek transcendence. Don't miss next week's program with the ever irreverent Reverend Freak Child, live for you on Red Barn Radio, the program that's been bringing you roots music, southern style, for nearly 20 years. Now let's get back to tonight's Red Barn Radio program. We come to you live on our social media platforms, broadcasting from the Arts Place Performance Hall here in the grand city of Lexington, Kentucky. And now please welcome back Woody Woodworth and the Piners to the Red Barn stage. All right, this next song I wrote over, uh, over the course of the pandemic. I was sitting around, caught a little bit of writer's block, and just trying to figure out something to say. And, uh, and, and you know, we were all kind of figuring out what, what was going to happen next. And I'm, I'm thankful that there's a little bit of music being played today. And I, I know we still have a long way to go. But uh, th this next song is called Hard to Be an Outlaw. And it's, uh, it's a song I started writing right after I read uh, Waylon Jennings' autobiography. And uh, anyway, let us, let us play this for you. It's hard to be an outlaw these days And they tell you to shut up and sing They don't like the way you look They don't like the way you sing And it's hard to be an outlaw these days I said it's hard to be an outlaw Step out on the stage, tip your hat Make your own name well, Every night is different And every night's the same And it's hard to be an outlaw these days And I'm standing over here With my finger in the air Just doing it the best I know how Cause it's hard
So I had a really uh, great relationship with my papa, and uh, and this next song is is one that I'm tried to my best to tell tell a story about what what he taught me. And uh, I was fortunate to get that time with him, and uh, like I told you before, he really loved country music, and uh, he turned me on to a lot of really good, really good. Um, music and uh, I'm thankful for that and so I wrote this tune called uh, Country Ain't Country. Well, I remember riding around in your truck, windows down the radio, singing to an old Cowboy booze dressed to a dime in his three-piece suit Sang every word to mama tried Yesterday's wine Well, the older I get, the more I see What it was he was teaching me This country ain't country anymore Smelt like dirt, gasoline, carried a bucket of tools in his back seat. He could fix anything that you wanted to, just to pass the time. Give me that. Country music sounds the same. Pop song song with the southern twang about the summer trucks and beer. It'll take me back to the good old days when country music had something to say. It played from a transistor radio, just echoed in my ear. Where the older I get, the more I see 
what it was he was teaching me. It's country, ain't country anymore. Give me that. So the, the night before I left for Bristol to, to cut my first record back in 2016, I, uh, I needed a couple more songs, and, and there were two that I, uh, that day before I started working and um, working on them, and uh, one ended up being the title track and kind of brought it, brought it all together for me, and uh, the story I was trying to tell on that record, and the other one was this song, and it's called Nashville by Morning. There's a feeling inside me that's deep in my soul There's a feeling I get That won't let me go Like a drunkard to wine Or a miner to gold If I don't get to Nashville by morning, I might never know. This old music keeps calling, tugging at my soul. If I don't get to Nashville by morning, I might never know. Like a horse to water and a wish in a way. The way light needs darkness and heaven needs hell. The way a man needs a woman and a traveler's a road. If I don't get to Nashville by morning, I might never know. This old music keeps calling, tugging at my soul. If I don't get to Nashville by morning, I might never know. Like a clock needs time The way a train needs a rail An old dog needs a bone If I don't get to Nashville by morning I might never know This old music keeps calling Talking at my soul 
If I don't get to Nashville by morning, I might never know. If I don't get to Nashville by morning, I might never know. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Red Barn Radio, and, and Woody Woodworth and the Piners are with us here this evening. They're from Richmond, Virginia, uh, that area, general area, and uh, we're so glad to have them here with us. If, if, Like I said, if you just joined in, you ought to get back and watch this entire live stream, and uh, you, you're not going to be disappointed. Um, hey, Woody, I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking uh, just a couple of minutes and introducing these uh, fine friends of yours who are making this great music with you tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Thank yeah. you, Ray. Uh, on, on my left here is Ian Blackwood, a mandolin player and, uh, and, and fiddle player. And, uh, and Ian and Johnny, had, and I'll, I'll introduce Johnny in a second, but they, they've been kind of the, the longest in the band uh, so, so far uh, for me. And, um, and, and the next, Johnny Wood on bass. And uh, both Ian and Johnny and I, we all kind of met on, on, on Craigslist. And, um, <laughs> you know, I, right. I always tell people, like, how did the band happen? And I'm like, well, it was a little bit of dumb luck in Craigslist. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah right. Uh, Craigslist is, uh, yeah, it is some dumb luck there. Uh, you see all kinds of things there. So you could probably tell us some, uh, some pretty embarrassing things, some things that could really embarrass these guys. Yeah, yeah, You've for known sure, them long for enough. sure. I, I won't do that. But, <laughs> but uh, Johnny Wood I met on Craigslist as well. I was looking for a bass player. And... Um, and, and, and we were growing the band, and uh, I met Johnny, and, and he started telling me about where he, where he came from. And, uh, you know, it's a small world, but, but he told me he was from Charlottesville. And I said, well, I have family from Charlottesville, Virginia. And we got to talk a little bit more, and then we started hanging out a little bit, and, and we got to talking. And, and I said, what part of Charlottesville is, is your family from? He said, well, Greene County. And I said, well, well my family's from Greene County, and that's a, that's a holler in the Blue Ridge, right off the Skyline Drive on, uh. on the Blue Ridge Parkway and uh, there. And, um, and, uh, and I met Johnny, and, and we started uh, connecting. And next thing you know, we're sharing who rel relatives and that sort of thing. And my, my, my great-great-grandmother was a wood. And, uh, and, and come to find out, we're actually distant cousins. Oh, so come on. It's a really, really small world. All right. But this Johnny Wood on the bass. All right, Johnny. And uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, on the drums, Andrew Chrislip, also from Richmond, Virginia. He's uh, actually one of the newest members uh, of the band. Uh, we 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 had to find a drummer, you know, following like the COVID COVID times, and uh, we were fortunate to find Andrew. So Andrew Chrislip on the drums, and then behind me to my back right is also a newer member of the band, uh, Mr. Rich Stein on lead guitar. All right. And then last but, but certainly not least, uh, this young man uh, grew up in the same county I did, and, and he had a reputation of playing the harmonica. And when we started forming the band, I reached out to him. But this is Mr. Dylan Harris on the harmonica. All right. Away from Hanover County, Virginia. All right. There are people out there in Radio Land who are just, you know, doing this, woo, holding the lighters up and all that business. Just picture that, if you would. Um, all right. Great. You guys sound terrific. Um, so, Woody, I wonder if you might... Um, Go back to uh, again, sort of like where your music comes from a little bit, and um, kind of curious to know um, who some of the who some of the players are, other than sort of these the old sort of traditional country um, coming more current. You said that that uh, Red Barn, for instance, introduced you to some new players. Uh, Tyler, you mentioned, um, and and who are some other f folks? I think maybe. Uh, so in Virginia, we're kind of chasing Kentucky a little bit, uh, and. Uh, I really uh, started recently listening to a lot of John R. Miller. Oh, all right. And uh, really got into his music recently. But but really, a uh, key key bands that that kind of changed my life when I was in college. I, I got to see the Drive By Truckers oh, uh, yeah. in a, in kind of a gymnasium, uh, like an auxiliary gymnasium. And, and Jason Isbell was still in the band. And uh, and that night kind of changed my life. And I saw. Um, the songwriting, I saw the rock and roll, mm. I saw that country uh, all mixed together and blended together, and I knew right then and there that's what I wanted to do. And so uh, I listened to a lot of Jason Isbell and and, um, and Patterson Hood, 
and, and Cooley from the Drive-By Truckers. Mm. Um, they're some of my favorites. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot. There's a, really, a lot of good music out there. you got to search for it. Uh, you know, we've got s- several good bands coming out of v- Virginia. Uh, uh, our friends, 49 Winchester. Mm. Um, and, and also uh, Morgan Wade, who, who's from Floyd County, Virginia, and, and she's a wonderful songwriter. And so th- those are some of the folks that I'm currently listening to, along with uh, Arlo McKinley and, uh, and I- I, you know, Cody Jinks and, and, and Whitey Morgan and some of, some of those All folks. right. All right. Nice. How do, how do you like the, uh, the term uh, Americana? What do you think of that? And anybody can join in on this. Yeah, so I, I think I'm in, I, I think I fit in the Tyler's camp <laughs> on that. Um, <laughs> What's he said? I think it's just another, another. They're just trying to brand it something else, and uh, and it's it's really country music. And uh, when you look back on the history of American music, um, there a lot of lines diverge and uh, in blues and gospel and, and country. And uh, being from Virginia, I have a huge love for traditional folk music. And uh, found out recently that uh, I have some relatives, distant cousins from Greene County and Bacon Holler. A uh, long, long, long time ago in the 50s, uh, there was a guy named George Foss who was a song catcher and a song collector, huh. and he went into this holler in, in Bacon Holler and uh, uh, found found folk music, and, and some of those are some of my distant relatives. So uh, uh, Mary Bird McAllister or May Bird McAllister is one of them, and one of her, her, her songs she was famous for doing was ac- uh, Across the Blue Mountain. Huh. Um, Wow, that's cool. So, you, but you, you know, when you uh, you sort of classify your own music, you know, you, I know you you're asked to do that, right? And, you know, on your website, one, you, you use the term alt, alt country. Yeah, it's 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 hard. I, you know, it's hard to stick it in a box. And 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 we're playing, you know, we're playing a little bit. There's there's some bluegrass in there, and there's some country, and there's some rock and roll. And so, you know, when people people ask you to use words to describe what it is. Um, I know what I do is, is very much rooted in my family tradition and growing up in, in, um, near and around the Appalachian Mountains and the Blue Ridge Mountains. And, uh, and so I wanted to kind of draw it to that. I wanted to have a, a central point where it came from for me. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, I, I mean, I would probably, if I could just call it anything, I'd probably just call it uh, country music. But yeah. Uh-huh. But it's, it's, um, some people might, might disagree with me there. But I know. I think it works. I think it works. Um, hey, uh, what about? Uh, I, I wonder if we might talk a little bit about Richmond and, and the scene. Uh, the scene there. Um, you know what, what's what, what's going on there in terms of the the, the clubs and and just the enthusiasm of um, you know the of the community for the kind of music that you play. It's a it's a really great musical community. Um, Tell us about some particular venues there that uh, yeah, people might yeah. want to so, visit. Yeah, so the Broadberry, uh, the Camel, they're, they're really great, great venues uh, that, that really are, are really supportive of local music, and I think it helps that community there thrive. Um, there, there's bands coming through Richmond all, all the time, and, and I think even locally we've got some really great bands there. And, uh, it, you know, having a place to play and a place to call home is, is really nice. Um, and it's hard because sometimes you got to leave home to 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 find you know to, to to find followers and find people that like your music and and sometimes uh-huh. that happens but we've just been very fortunate to to, to really have a, a a good base in, in Richmond and the community there and you know um you know there there an alt country scene really popped up there in the in the early uh, 90s with uh, with a band called Dirt Ball and a gentleman's named Wes Freed who does all the art for the, dr- the Drive by Truckers and the truckers started coming coming up and playing um, w- with them and, and different shows there oh, in Richmond. Right. So, so th- there is a c- slight connection there w- with Patterson and, and, and Mike Cooley coming coming up there and and, and playing in Richmond. And so, uh, it, there's also a college campus there, and and I think that you know th- there's um, th- there's creativity and there's um, a lot of passion for the arts, so we're very fortunate to be from Richmond. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, give how about a, a little more uh, sort of chamber of commerce stuff about uh, Richmond for people who might visit there for the first time. Uh, so, capital of the Confederacy, great yep. Civil War history there. Yep, a, l- a um, lot of history and a lot of history that uh, <coughs> um, I think you know needs to be told and known, uh, but in some cases maybe not worshipped. And uh, we just went through several changes there mm. I- in Richmond and, and some of our statues, you know. The, the oh, Monument Ave. Yeah, Monument Avenue, which was like a, a very famous place for people to go. And uh, 
I spent several years working in Richmond when I first graduated college, and I worked at, in some inner city schools. And you know, and I was taught about the the Confederacy and in, in the South in, in Virginia, and 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 the Civil War was a big part because we had battlefields everywhere. My yeah. my great grandfather's uh, childhood home, or, or my, my grandfather's childhood home, my great grandfather's home, uh, was r right on one of the, the the largest cavalry battles in the Civil War. So I grew up as a kid going out. And and, fi and and finding you know bullets and we found shells and wow. the bomb squad would have to be called and so it, it's <laughs> that history is there but when I was working in the city you know one thing I think I had a hard time with was trying to put myself in someone else's shoes and and trying to understand what those monuments might not or might mean to to someone else and so um, it, it's it, we're, we're definitely going through a lot of changes right now. And uh, and I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud of Richmond for for the things that they're they're doing. Yeah, are they uh, relocating uh, relocating the statues, the monuments? You know, I don't, I'm not I'm not sure exactly what the plan is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I think s some of that history definitely needs to be remembered so that we can learn from it. Um, and, and and maybe they should have their own place. Um, but I, I don't know if uh, you know. Standing over Monument Avenue was the right and proper place for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, Lexington too, and and many other cities have had to go through there. We we um, we took down a, a statue of John Breckenridge and also John Hunt Morgan. Um, so yeah, that's uh, it's a it's a different world now, and and it's kind of cool that we're all thinking about different things and having different perspectives about that. So that's uh and, and we're all amazing. we're all human and I think it's important to try to see the humanity in each other. Yeah. I think that's the common ground we gotta get to and, and try to learn from each other. Yeah. Hey, uh why don't you tell us about uh you you've got a couple more songs coming up, Busted Knuckles, Holy Roller, and then Virginia. Tell us about uh tell us about the tunes coming up. So uh, these couple of uh, Busted Knuckles is a is a newer song that we we actually got a chance to record uh over the downtime because of the pandemic. And uh, Buster's Knuckle is kind of just a story. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to work around and with veterans. And uh, it, it was a song that was on my mind, ha having some of those experiences and talking with, with some veterans about th their experiences of serving the country. And, uh, and, and I, I kind of paired it up with my own experience and struggle uh, with doing some of the things you don't want to do mm -hmm. uh, to get to a place where, where you can do what you want to do. And so that's Buster Knuckles. And, um, and we also have uh, a, a pretty fun song called Holy Roller uh, that, that I wrote uh, uh, one day down in North Carolina. And I just that I had a had this idea and, and wrote that. And I, I listened to um, Justin Towns Earl at the time and oh, right. kind of got some inspiration from him on that on that song. Wow. Uh, and then Virginia, which was yeah. just kind of I've been writing Virginia for a long time. Um, Growing up in rural Hanover County, I, I worked on farms and that sort of thing. Spent a lot of time thinking about where I, where I came from, riding on tractors and that sort of thing. So um, Virginia was just, as I like I said, the night before I went to go record this record in, in, in 2016, uh, I, I, I needed one more song, and I wanted something to kind of tie it all together. And, and for me, it was, it was that song. So Virginia is just really just t a song about um, connecting back to the place where you come from. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, you guys, for being on the show and for making the long trip. And uh, I wish you didn't have to drive back tonight. We'd love to keep you here and uh, treat you right after the show, but that'll happen another time. What we go for, can I just introduce again Ian Blackwood oh, yeah. on the mandolin, Johnny Wood on the bass, Andrew Chrislip on the drums, Rich Stein on the lead guitar, and Mr. Dylan Harris on the harmonica. Woody Woodworth and the Piners, folks. I ain't much on carpentry I took this job Shit ain't free Dead a winter in a frozen ditch I 
swung that hammer until I missed. Nearly took my thumb off clean. I duct taped it up to stop the bleeding. That little girl is sweet on me. She shows me things I ain't never seen. And we'll go down the Cogsville Road. We'll light one up and take it slow. We'll light one up and take it slow. Busted knuckles and broken bottles, learning lessons one at a time. Busted knuckles and broken bottles, learning lessons one at a time. Well, I always follow the golden rule. I went to the core after high school. They shipped me off to a foreign land. And I busted my knuckles fixing tanks. One more tour and I'll be home. Gonna settle down with that pretty girl. I'm gonna settle down with that pretty girl. Busted knuckles and broken bottles. Learning lesson one at a time. Busted knuckles. Broken bottles, learning lessons one at a time. Well, I took a job and I settled down. Me and that girl used to run around. Now we've got two kids of our own. Some of my buddies ain't coming home. Yes, yeah, some of my buddies ain't coming home. It's busting up, broken bottles, learning lessons. This is our last song, Virginia. I stand corrected. We're going to do Holy Roller. Save, saved us from sheer disaster. Come on, give the lead singer a set list. He's got one. All right, this song's called Holy Roller. I'm 
I'm a holy roller. I'm a loaded gun. I ain't no sweet rendition. I am my mama's son. I'm a honky tonker. I'm a loaded gun. I ain't one to judge. I am my mama's son. Shake it, baby, won't you shake it good? Come on and shake it, baby, like I know you should. Come on and shake it, baby, won't you shake it good? Come on and shake it, baby, until the morning comes. I'm a holy roller. Thank y'all so much, and thanks again for Red Barn for having us. We really, really appreciated it, and um, 
really is a special night and a special place for me particularly. So thank you so much. This song's called Virginia. I got it right this time. Stones throw from Richmond on the banks of the river James. Cool flowing water course through the land like the blood in my veins. From the Shenandoah Valley and the shores of the Chesapeake. Sweet fields of yesterday Come on back to me Take me home, Virginia Back to your loving arms Take me home, Virginia Back to the place old enough to leave you I packed my bags and I left but I ain't never been nowhere reminds me of you take me home Virginia back to Take me home, Virginia Back to the place where I was born Wow, so many people to thank for our program. First, Woody Woodworth and the Piners, our guests this evening. And then there's our staff who make our production happen so beautifully each week. Uh, Matt and Adam and John and Kate and our esteemed producer, Ed Commons. Uh, thank you all for listening to our webcast, watching us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch, and those listening to us on the network of Red Barn stations and media worldwide. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. It's your chance to hear more great live music from Red Barn Radio and WEKU. 
those of you here in the central Kentucky area, you got to be sure to check out Red Barn TV, our weekly program of music now on ABC 36 WTVQ. Red Barn Radio comes to you from our home, the Arts Place Performance Hall in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. Our website has updates and further information on our guests and our program. We're on the web at redbarnradio.com. And now once again, folks, please welcome back Woody Woodworth and the Piners to the Red Barn stage. Thank you so much. This is a song I wrote uh, most recently. And uh, I want to dedicate it to, to Johnny's father who passed away uh, earlier this year. So this song is for him. I'm lucky I get to play his guitar tonight uh, at this broadcast. So uh, his father left me this guitar and was very kind to do that. And so anyway, this song is called Long Hard Road. And I was, it's a song I started writing and I wanted to, I, could, I was having a hard time finishing it. had a hard time trying to find what to say. And, and when Johnny's father passed away, it, it, it um, broke my heart and touched me in, in, in a way, and I wanted to pay tribute to him. So um, that's what this song uh, is dedicated to. Thank you all for having us. Woke up this morning, nothing but dread running through my bones. And it felt like the whole world was coming down around us in a moment. And there ain't no rest for the weary, that's one thing you're sure to know. And if you said her name, would it mean a thing, would it be? Enough to break your heart And it's a long, hard road For traveling
Well, that's all for our show for this week. You can see and hear Red Barn Radio worldwide, though, as we stream live on the web on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, Wednesdays, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern in North America. You can hear archived performances on Spotify and iTunes. You can see video on the Red Barn Radio YouTube channel. And now be sure to check out our social media for updates to our upcoming schedules and more information on our program. And from all of us here at Red Barn Radio, we'd like to wish all our friends worldwide that you have a terrific week. Keep working together to be safe and healthy. And until next time, good night from Red Barn Radio.